Hi ladies and gentlemen, this video series is on uh, the newly introduced scientific computing lab. There are seven experiments in that, so uh, we, we, in this video we will see the overview of scientific computing. Let me start with that presentation. So the speech is uh, organized into your learning outcomes rationale for the course uh, uh, scientific computing lab. Uh, what are the course outcomes in the syllabus? Uh, then uh, the scientific requirements of scientific computing. What is scientific computing and the requirement for scientific computing? And the reason for choosing Python at the uh, thing. In the syllabus, many languages are offered like Python, R, uh, Scilab, etc. There we use uh, Python and we, we will uh, tell you why we prefer Python. Then uh, as a summary of your learning outcomes. What you will learn in this course, uh, you will learn the rationale for scientific computing lab, why this lab is introduced, what is the need of uh, such a lab, what do you gain out of this lab. Uh, and you will learn the course outcomes, then you will learn why we prefer Python to other languages, uh, then you will learn the requirements in scientific computing. When we uh, do this four-year engineering course, you learn a lot of engineering mathematics, especially in four or five semesters. So in the first four or five semesters, you learn a lot of engineering mathematics. And much of this mathematics is being used in the industry, but not in the form that we learn in, uh, as problems and all, but as actual implementations. But there is a wide gulf between the math we learn and the actual engineering application. So this course is introduced to bridge that gulf between engineering mathematics and the actual applications. Then the student uh, often in uh, computing, you often in uh, many scientific work, you come across large arrays and matrices. So uh, even though you study these arrays and matrices in uh, engineering math classes, uh, many students do not know how to use them in real practice. So the course uh, will make the student apply arrays and matrices. Then uh, this course actually lays the foundation, this lab session actually lays the foundation for uh, 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 future labs such as uh, signal processing lab, a computational electromagnetics lab, etc. The course outcomes are one, uh, uh, you, the student will learn the need and requirements of scientific computing and familiarize one programming language for scientific computing and data visualization. So it is required that the student learns uh, one language uh, for scientific computing. So uh, often we use Python, um, R, uh, MarLab, uh, Scilab, etc. for scientific computing. Uh, but we, here we use uh, Python and uh, uh, often uh, there is a great requirement for data visualization. Uh, we, we, we encounter a large amount of data in the engineering life and we, uh, we, we have to visualize that, analyze that. So the second uh, outcome is uh, you uh, can approximate array or matrix with a matrix decomposition. So often you have to, you, you come across large arrays and sometimes you have to do some analysis and uh, represent it with a smaller array without losing much of the information. So uh, such de matrix decomposition are, uh, you, you have to familiarize uh, such matrix decompositions. Then the student will be able to implement numerical integration and differentiation. Often uh, this uh, kind of calculus uh, is very useful in industry where uh, you will have to implement this integration and differentiation. Often some functions cannot be integrated so we, we have to resort to numerical methods and uh, the student will be able to implement such things. Then the student will be able to solve ordinary differential equation for engineering application. This is another uh, need uh, rather than the analytical solution, how to have numerical solutions for ordinary differential equations. Then a CO5 is students will be able to compute with exported data from instruments. Often in your, uh, in your future lab sessions and experiments you will be uh, using uh, things like storage oscilloscopes, spectral analysis, etc. All of them uh, store data uh, which uh, you can export as a, as a CSV file or a Excel spreadsheet. So you should be able to take out that data and do further analysis with the help of computers. 
so you see a waveform on the uh, say storage oscilloscope suppose you may be interested in knowing the uh, spectrum of that so you will should be able to export it as a csv file and store it in a pen drive and take it out and read it with the uh, python and uh, do the further analysis uh, maybe you want to compute the fft of that you want the spectrum of that so you can do those computations you will be able to do that then you will be able to realize how periodic functions are constituted by sinusoids. Often uh, you come across Fourier series and transforms in some form or another in any engineering work. So you should be able to implement uh, those series and uh, transforms. So that is CO6. CO7 is so you, you will be able to, student will be able to simulate random process and understand their statistics uh, because in, uh, in old engineering applications uh, we encounter random process be it communication or anything you, you, you come across some random variables and processes so you should be able to simulate them and understand them. So these are the seven course outcomes. Now, when I think, say about scientific computing, it is a computing for the purpose of scientific or engineering research. It involves data analysis, data presentation, etc. So, some requirements for scientific computing tool is that it should be an interpreter language and not a compiled language. Uh, uh, because when you think about C, it's a compiled language. That means you write a source code, you uh, you, you compile it, uh, then you create an executable. Uh, then you run the executable and uh, you have you, your code is running so uh, here it is not like that it's a line by line interpreter it is wise to use a line by line interpreter in the case of uh, scientific computing because uh, each line responds to your uh, inputs uh, it is a lot simpler uh, than uh, compiled languages Suppose in, in most cases you may be interested in simple things without many hassles like you may be wanting a plot of a function or you may be needing the Fourier transform of a function or you want to see the spectrum of a signal something like that. So maybe if you can get in a couple of lines and uh, get the result for that line as a response to that line uh, interpreted uh, so th that, that will be easier. Then uh, in most of the scientific computing we have to deal with large arrays, matrices and vectors. So uh, th there should be easy routines for matrix and vector multiplications, inverse of matrix etc. Then the third thing is it should have a good uh, publication quality uh, uh, plotting library. Often uh, you, you may have to present it somewhere, uh, present your results somewhere maybe uh, in a meeting or a conference or uh, in a journal paper. So uh, you should have a publication, you, you should be, uh, you should have publication quality plots uh, uh, representing the data. So you should have a publication quality plotting library. The language should have a good publication quality plotting library. Uh, then it should have high speed of execution and easy syntax. Uh, easy syntax is very important. Uh, then less programming hassles because uh, we are engineers and not truly programmers. So we have to have, uh, we have to accomplish the task with a minimum of programming hassles. So these are, uh, generally speaking, these are some of the requirements in scientific computing. Now the reason we use Python, uh, that, that is presented in this slide, uh, the, the, the required computing can be done with many tools like MATLAB, MATLAB is a commercial product, Scilab, Scilab is a clone of MATLAB, it's a free open source clone of MATLAB, R is a, a statistical package. Such things can be done or uh, Octave can be used. But Python, in this course, Python is uh, preferred uh, due to the following reasons. One is Python is fully open source, modular, object-oriented language with a simple syntax. Okay. It's an open source uh, language without any licensing hassles. Then it is modular in the sense that each, every Python code is a module. Every Python code is a module, so you can uh, import these modules. So only only the required things need be imported to my working environment. So that is the advantage of being a modular language. Suppose if you have a MATLAB installation, if you click on the MATLAB window, every toolbox in that becomes live. So they are all loaded into the memory, and that creates a uh, that, that creates an excessive overhead. So computational overhead. So uh, with a Python, with a modular language, we can l keep things light and robust. Again, it's an object-oriented language. Everything in Python is an object. So you can get all uh, features of an object-oriented language when I use Python. Then Python is very popular in the industry for scientific computing, web applications uh, like uh, Flask, uh, uh, Django, etc. web applications. Then business solutions like uh, 
Odoo, etc. So the skill in Python is an asset to the student. So again, the, the fourth reason is Python is popular in the AI and machine learning field, which is gaining a lot of popularity these days. So from that area of uh, AI and machine learning, uh, graduates can exploit a lot of opportunities. So with the Python, you are equipped for the AI and machine learning industry. Then there are easy tools for data analysis and visualization such as SciPy, uh, PyLab, uh, Maya, v, uh, Pandas, etc. So many tools are there. Uh, Python tools are available for easy data analysis and visualization. So these are the five reasons why I prefer Python for this course. What you learned, uh, uh, so you learned the rationale for scientific computing lab. You understood the course outcomes. Then you understood the reason for using Python for this course and you understood the requirements in scientific computing. And that is the end of this uh, video. I thank you all.